Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Wanted to uh, shoot a, a, a quick video uh, and accomplish a couple things. One, show you the the new and improved version of our uh, of our pretty well known uh, Batpack product. Um, some of you may have been uh, familiar, or may already have uh, the the first generation, which was CNC cut out of HDPE, um, meaning that. Uh, that this this thin device was cut out of a slab uh, and then of course we do the interior work on the electronics and, and so forth um, and uh, and and that works great um, nothing wrong with it but uh, but we recently have been uh, exploring 3d printers and uh, frankly having a ball um, breaking a bunch of rules as far as uh, the things you're supposed to be able to do with plastic um, and then finding out what you can get away with when you've got a uh, when you've got some high-end CAD systems and uh, a handful of uh, nice printers so the backpack was an obvious choice to approach with the 3d printers and uh, uh, it's allowed us to, to make a unit that functionally is, is very similar to the original it's uh, it is uh, perhaps a bit cooler. It looks neater. Uh, it, I think, builds a little bit cleaner. Uh, it's a little easier to accomplish some of the, the difficult work inside. Um, there's a deceptive amount going on inside this little thing. Um, and, uh, and it's helpful to be able to do things. Uh, for example, the, the wires that, uh, that exit the fuse holder are actually traveling through 3D printed tunnels up into the the area where where all the connections are made um, so you can do some neat stuff with 3d printing and that's what we're doing here this is manufactured from high impact abs it's a very tough material um, and we can make different colors but frankly i'm a little scared to offer them because it seems like if we offer one in uh, red and blue people will buy a bunch of red when we have a bunch of blue on the shelf it's, uh, it's something that we kind of laugh about here um, but for the time being uh, the bat packs are are black and, uh, and we might do like a, a safety yellow is kind of an obvious one for some of our uh, emergency services customers. Um, but for the moment, they're, they're available in black. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar with, with what it does, um, a backpack essentially just straps to a very common SLA or AGM. Uh, and then nowadays, they make some life pose in the same format. Um, the ones that are the life pose that are drop-in replacements for AGMs also work with the backpacks, but you can if you look closely you can see that we have quick disconnects that are actually integrated into the backpack. Those connect to the tabs on the battery. Once connected, these Velcro straps wrap around the battery and hug it very securely. It's not going anywhere. Um, that that uh, that backpack is attached very well. Um, you've got a replaceable blade fuse uh, that's connected to one of the two Andersons, and that's denoted here fused or unfused. This is the fused one. This is the unfused. Um, you've got a, a voltmeter that also has an on-off switch. Um, now that switch activates only the meter. Um, you can pull quite a bit of power uh, through a, a backpack, especially if you have a, a, a device that's got a a surge on it at startup um, and uh, we're certainly not going to try to pump that much power through a, a little DC switch like this so this switch is strictly so you can turn on and off the voltmeter and uh, and therefore avoid that uh, that tiny little phantom load of the meter running or or simply to turn it off it's surprisingly bright in a dark room um, so this is uh, this is the RBC2 M2 we say RBC2 because that's one of the common designations of this size battery. Um, another common way to find this battery is a uh, is a, a UB129 or a UB127. The 7 and the 9 are the amp hours, respectively. Um, and uh, if we take just one more look at the at the backpack, this is as you would receive it. This is the the backpack by itself. The Velcro straps are waiting to be wrapped around. Uh, a battery the Andersons tuck in here and they can also be pulled out and then swiveled up if you notice this little notch right here that's what that's for um, one of the handy things about uh, about a backpack is that you can parallel uh, two of them together so if you had two backpacks two batteries you could take the unfused side 
plug them into one another and of course you've just paralleled those two batteries pretty handy um, so in any event that's a, an introduction to the revised or improved RBC2 bat pack now something that we're pretty excited about is this this is uh, not a replacement of the bat pack you just saw it's a complement to it or it is uh, a, a bat pack in its own right the neat thing about this and I'll show you one that's not attached to a battery neat thing about this is that believe it or not in this device not only do we have the same uh, voltmeter as in the standard and a, a switch uh, in this case it's a push button because of space and packaging but a switch for the meter um, but we've got uh, Anderson's you'll notice in a unusual configuration so you don't accidentally power them up um, uh, this feeds the solar controller so with this device attached again to a very common SLA battery you can push up to 50 watts of solar and uh, you know for you electrical math guys out there you immediately probably went wow five amps yes five amps um, and uh, and that means that you could very quickly charge a battery like this uh, and you get into some neat stuff okay you could for example take another bat pack pigtail the two machines together like this and once you've done that plug in here with your solar panel and obviously at that point you're going to start charging both batteries and also in each case you'll see the voltmeters react as the batteries uh, are, are charged um, there's some neat stuff you can do once you start getting into having multiple bat packs especially when one of them is solar um, now this uh, this this unit um, uses a pulse width modulated solar controller it's a, a fairly typical uh, uh, probably the most common type of controller um, it is smart enough to do a, uh, a bulk charge and then a, a, a taper into a float charge um, it'll bulk charge at 14.6 uh, volts and uh, it will float at uh, I believe 13.8 and that this is all engraved on the back of the uh, of the plate um, one of the things too you're going to start to see uh, it, it's kind of exciting we, we've been uh, after after years of using CNC machines to do our engraving uh, here lately on a lot of products we've been moving towards uh, laser engraving um, and it just it looks nice and it pops and it's a little easier to to make small more detailed lettering and so forth um, but uh, this is the Batpack Solar um, very cool uh, we, we're already uh, starting to get some neat uh, neat uh, feedback from customers that are using these in some pretty unusual circumstances um, one of the things you might want is uh, this little adapter which we sell on the site uh, uh, for like eight dollars along with with this unit but this adapter of course plugs into the solar input and it gives you what is probably the most common uh, connection to the uh, the increasingly common small folding solar panels which is a 5.5 by 2.1 DC coax positive pin of course um, this unit along with the standard bat pack would give you a tremendous amount of flexibility in the field you can take a a, a folding solar panel we happen to sell a, a 28 watt folding um, it's typically sold with our r2 juice box uh, but that panel would work fine uh, but especially nowadays with solar getting less expensive um, pretty easy to imagine this in a go bag and then a small folding solar panel um, to complement them and uh, when you're talking 50 watts of power um, that, that's uh, you know it's, it's hard to say for sure because there's different uh, manufacturers and different different machines of course but uh, you know you're going to be able to power uh, 
power a mobile rig or, or charge a whole bunch of, uh, of cell phones or tablets or run a laptop or LED lights or uh, these just be awesome for camping or for emergencies uh, apartment dwellers when you don't uh, you, you can't have a gas Jenny you could dangle a little solar panel over the balcony charge these things up and come evening time run some small lights maybe a small fan uh, a lot of stuff you can do in any case um, folks I appreciate your time excited about this stuff you can see both of these at portable universalpower.com and again it's the standard backpack that's been improved thanks to 3d printing and a lot of lessons learned and then this new backpack solar so this is bill harrison saying thanks for your time we'll see you guys bye